You may have seen our next performer on Comedy Central's This Is Not Happening, one of my very favorite shows, The Liar Show. He's also been on Story Collider, and he has his own show called Stooped to Stages. Please welcome Gastor El Monte. Recently, uh, I've been struggling with, uh, with my son because he's been asking me a lot of questions, you know? Um, it's a little confusing to help him out because being frank, I, I don't know how to describe white people <laughs> to my kids. And all of his questions are about y'all. <laughs> you know? And I appreciate y'all. Y'all let me in. Their coach is great. Thank you. I am here to learn. <laughs> my son asked me six months ago, he said, Dad, uh, what's beef jerky? <laughs> I challenge you. Explain that to an eight-year-old Dominican kid and make it make sense. You know? I was like, all right, son, you know how I work real hard? We eat, you know, chicken, fish beans when we struggling once every two weeks i get steak it's great isn't it yeah yeah it's juicy it's tender yeah so beef jerky is when you take all of that good shit out of the steak <laughs> and instead of enjoying it at once you kind of like just tolerate it for six months And he looked at me confused, and he went to my dad for, like, cosign. Like, is this true? My dad's like, I don't know. I don't even know white people. This is where we at. It's confusing times. He asked me about skiing, too. Skiing was a fun one. He was like, it looks fun. He's like, what do you do? I was like, I don't know. They put sticks on their feet, and they look for the most dangerous moments in Mother Nature's year, and they go towards it. And you see how it's flat here? They're like, nah, let's go to the highest point. <laughs> and let's go down that. He said, that seems crazy. Dad said, I agree, son. I agree. <laughs> you know? And it's all marketing. You guys do a real bad job of selling it, you know? Like, if you would have just said, hey, Gastro, you want to play this sport where you can wear Timberland boots and a North Face coat? I would sign up for that. That sounds like the blackest shit I heard. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm on board, you know? Such a different thing. But I appreciate it because he still comes to me with those questions. I'm still a source for him of information, you know? I might not be right, but he trusts me so far, you know? I'm not even sure if that laugh was from my wife's table. Like, I feel like she's just co-signing <laughs> all of these disasters right now. She's like, yes, he is terrible at all of these things. You know, but it, rem it reminds me of uh, when my grandfather first came to this country. Um, I was seven years old, and I remember being real excited. Because this is somebody that I would fly back home to the Dominican Republic, and I would see the guy that raised 11 kids, you know. And, you know, they raised them to be successful adult women and men, and they do well here, you know. And I got to see him come here, and I thought we was going to take over, you know. Because I, I was seven. I wanted to do a whole bunch of stupid shit. And here was this adult that also was cool with me doing stupid shit, like all grandparents should be. You know what I'm saying? He'd be like, yo, yo, grandpa, can I play tag on Atlantic Avenue? Sure, go for it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I want to eat peanut chews and now ladies for dinner. Why not, Gastor? <laughs> hey, grandpa, can we find out how many firecrackers I can light up at once before we got to run? Sure. <laughs> the world is your oyster, Gastor. He's a great man. He had cool sayings, too. He would be like, in a battle between a cow and a goat, the winner is the chef. <laughs> I still have no idea when to use that adage. <laughs> but it seemed important to him, you know? Hold it there. But I remember when he moved here, what struck me as odd is I would go back home and we would all show reverence. But when he came here, all of his kids, his youngest one was 30 years old. So it was odd because this was the first time that I saw an adult lose power. 
This was the first time I saw an authority figure no longer being viewed as an authority figure. His kids were no longer like going to him for answers. If anything, he was one of us. He had to ask permission to do shit. You know, it was weird. Like my cousin Gio, you know, he was 10 years old and he wanted to roll a blade down the stairs of the building. He ain't make it. You know. And they asked my grandfather, yo, what's going on? I was like, yo, he had a shot. They're like, Grandpa, you, you can't let your grandkids roll a blade down the stairs. They can't do that. And my grandfather was like, well, we know that now. <laughs> he believed in us, is what I'm saying, you know? But I, I, I enjoyed having access to this adult that I, that I could go to with questions and while, you know, it was a little sad to see him no longer being in charge, it was cool to have access to somebody cool that was an adult 24-7. Particularly on Sundays, you know, we'd go to my grandma's house. All the women would go do their hair. It was like a 16-hour excursion. <laughs> no, white women don't know about this. Dominican women, that is your Sunday. Like, that is a family event. We all go there, we cheer them on because it's a process. They sweat, they got these machines that go on their heads that I think is hypnotizing them. <laughs> they put on rollers, you know, then at like 9.30 at night, they come out, they look gorgeous, but even if they did it, you so tired, you say it anyway, <laughs> you know. Men would sit out front, they would talk smack with the neighbors, and the kids would run outside and just play tag on the street while my grandfather watched us on the stoop. It was great times. On his like third or fourth weekend, the neighbors was talking. What's up, my man? You good? <laughs> on the third or fourth week he's here, you know, the neighbors and my uncles and my pops, they all talking on the stoop and they're like, yo, um, we've been getting a lot of break-ins lately on our block, you know? You know, I grew up in East New York, Brooklyn. This is the 90s, wasn't a great time, you know? If it was for me, you know, essentially because I had the freedom to play tag on Atlantic Avenue. I feel like people would snitch on me if I tried to do that today. But they were riffing about it. They're like, yo, man, we've had three break-ins this month. We should do something about it. He's like, what do you suggest? He's like, oh, we called the cops. Someone else who said, well, I, you know, I tried adding a security system. It didn't really work out too well. And my grandfather is hearing this whole conversation while looking at us. And finally, he gets frustrated. I see it in his eyes. And he turns around. And he looks at his sons my father and the neighbors, he says, you know what y'all need to do? Y'all need to get some chickens. <laughs> you understand what just happened? He told a group of 30 to 40 year old adults <laughs> in East New York, Brooklyn, that the key to stopping the local crime wave was to buy poultry. And then he turned around like he was sure he had made his point. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I did that. I'm good. <laughs> the neighbors, you know, they chuckle. You know, a lot of island people, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, they're familiar with the chicken situation. They think, you know, maybe my grandpa spent at home, whatever. So they started joking. They're like, Luciano, why do you think we should buy chickens? You know, explain the logic. And my grandfather started answering the questions as if it made sense. Like this was a real debate, you know? He was like, oh, you know, cause chickens don't lie. <laughs> you could trust chickens and noteworthy people. This is ludicrous shit, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I have tried my whole life to mimic the confidence that this man had in this moment. Do you understand the balls it takes to tell this? To 20 darn grown ups, get chickens. It'll solve the gun problems. Get chickens. You won't get robbed. And stand your ground. Madness. They let it go. They keep talking amongst themselves. And my grandfather's still hearing them complain. Finally, he gets frustrated. He looks at us. He calls us in. He's like, yo, listen, I need y'all to play in the yard for a little bit. I got to go walk out and get some. He leaves, comes back half hour later. He has a cage with four chickens. <laughs> now, I know that part ain't that impressive today. <laughs> you know, you guys have seen Brooklyn now. There's like land to farm, artisanal chicken shit, I'm sure. 
But this is 1990 East New York, Brooklyn, one block off of the J train on Fulton. This dude's been here three weeks. He don't speak a lick of English. Where the fuck do you go <laughs> to get four chickens? Like, if you ask me to get four chickens now, I don't know where I go. I just know that when I'm coming back, I'm running because I'm assuming it's a crime. Like, I stole something, you know? Something's wrong if I got that many chickens. He came in calm, cool. Yeah, these are the chickens. And he looked at them. They looked stunned, kind of like how y'all look right now. He opens the door to the backyard, and he lets them loose. He's like, everything's good. And he tells us to keep playing. And they laugh a little bit, you know, it's cute. And for the next few weeks, he keeps buying little bits of chickens. A month later, we got about 15 chickens in the backyard. Grandpa's feeling great. Security's top notch. <laughs> no. Everybody's feeling good. Now, I'm gonna put y'all on to something. I'm assuming most of y'all are New Yorkers. I'm a New Yorker too. I didn't know a lot about chickens going into this. I learned one particular thing about chickens. You know what chickens are incredibly good at? They're incredibly good at making more chickens. It's a gift. Six months later, we had 150 chickens on this block. They didn't fit in the yard anymore. Like anyone who was connected to our house had chickens. Front yard chickens, backyard chickens. Vacant lot chickens, Atlantic Avenue, chickens. Y'all go there to see the Nets play at Barclays. There was chickens a mile away, just roaming. It was crazy. Neighbors started complaining. You think you get mad when a pigeon shits on your car? Imagine when a chicken does it, because you know the chicken can't fly. That means it got up to your car. Just to shit on your car. So they call a meeting, they bring my grandfather in. I had to sneak into this, this is amazing. And I see all the grown ups, they're talking serious. Yo, we gotta talk about this chicken shit. Chicken shit crazy. How we gonna talk about the chickens, yo? Just let's, let's address it directly. Right, right, good. Luciano, um, listen, man, uh, I know you just moved back here six months ago. We appreciate you being here. I love having elders in the community, but we've talked with your sons, we talked with your son in law. We think the chicken situation a little out of hand, man. <laughs> One, two, three chickens, five, ten chickens. We got like 300 chickens back here, boss. What are we gonna do about these chickens? And my grandfather looks at them dumbfounded. He's like, I didn't want chickens. You guys complained about robberies. I started buying chickens. Nobody's been robbed since. You're welcome. And he kept it moving. He just walked out the meeting. <laughs> we just keep getting more chickens. It's madness now. A year later, there's at least a thousand chickens on my block. Have you ever had a drug dealer ring your bell to complain about the chickens before? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Almonte, I respect your grandfather. He's a great guy. But the chickens are making it real hard to keep our business low key. I thought Diamond was real reasonable with that request, you know? He was a good guy. You know, it was madness. But I came to appreciate it because he had his methods, you know? A couple weeks later, I see my parents kind of like running hectic Saturday morning, at like five o'clock. Wakes me up from my bed, so I run out to the, to the living room to see what's going on. I see my dad getting dressed and my mom's getting dressed. And they're like, yo, we, we got to go to your, to your uncle's house, see what's going on with your grandfather and all this. The, the cops are over there now. And I'm like, okay, you know, I want to see what's going on. So I get dressed, we go over there. And the cop is talking to my dad and my uncle as soon as we get there. And he has one of my favorite conversations ever. So he tells my dad, he's like, so uh, you guys brought the chickens here on purpose. A thousand chickens, you bought a thousand chickens to Fulton and Atlantic Avenue, Brooklyn on purpose. And my dad responded the way my grandfather had taught him, with logic that don't make sense to nobody but him. 
He was like, no, sir. I don't want to be ridiculous. We only bought three to four chickens at a time. <laughs> so how did the rest of the chickens get here? Well, I don't know if you noticed know about chickens, but they're incredibly good at making more chickens. <laughs> so the cop is like, so, so how did the chickens help y'all out? Well, again, sir, the guy tried to break into the house. On his way out, he tripped on the chickens. <laughs> I don't know if you've woken up a chicken before, they're pretty loud. <laughs> it gave us time to go outside, keep them, and we called you, and that's why you hit. <laughs> the cop is stunned. He's like, you telling me that six foot two, 200 pound guy, he tripped on a chicken? I don't believe that, man. I know it sounds hard to believe chickens are real small. You wouldn't trip on one chicken. But we got a thousand chickens back there, boss. It's a well-oiled machine. We got a system. So I run inside. I got to see what's going on here. You know, I don't see my grandfather taking credit. This is his moment. And he's sitting down in the living room, mad calm on his seat. And I'm like, yo, yo, grandpa, how'd you know the chicken was going to work, man? This is incredible. And he's like, yo, nobody asked me. Thank you. Yeah, you know, in DR, I'm from this little town, Bonal. It's mostly a farming community. We only had one rich tenant in the whole community. I was a sheriff in my 20s and 30s. Dude got robbed once. I lived a mile and a half away walking. And the guy paid most of the taxes for the community. He told me I had to stay in his house unless I could come up with a solution. So I gave him 20 chickens. Next night, the guy came to break back in again. The chickens woke him up, and the guards caught the guy. Figured it works there, and people know about chickens. Nobody know about chickens here. <laughs> I was like, that's brilliant shit, Grandpa. <laughs> He's like, I know. You know why it works? I'm like, why? Because chickens don't lie, Gaston. <laughs> chickens tell the truth. And grandfathers do too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>